Hello and welcome to my JC Traveling World. Mexico City is the fifth largest city in the world with a population of 22 million people. I recently spent 10 days here and would like to share my experience with you. As always, I share some tips at the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Happy traveling! Mexico City is in the central part of Mexico at approximately 7,300 feet and is the country's capital. When I was there in August, the temperature ranged from 81 in the afternoon to the mid-50s overnight and it rained occasionally in the afternoon and evenings. The city is served by multiple international airlines and by many domestic bus companies making it easy to get there. I took a non-stop bus from San Miguel de Allende to Mexico City for $35. The city has a very good public transportation system with buses, subways, and a light rail. In addition, reasonably priced food was always seems to be available. I did notice a lot of cabs, but I chose not to use them as they charge tourists more than they charge locals. In addition to all the mass transit, there are also several companies who offer hop-on, hop-off buses for the tourists who want to sightsee. Mexico City's Internet for All program has deployed over 31,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the cities in popular tourist locations. Look for signs that say Wi-Fi Gratuito. Mexico City was originally founded in 1325 and was called Tenochtitlan. It was an island city that was ruled by the Aztec until 1520 when the Spanish conquered Mexico and drained the lake to expand the city. The oldest section of the city is an area called Zocalo and is home to the many museums and government buildings that were built on top of the ruin of the Tenochtitlan. Please note that most museums in Mexico are closed on Mondays. The central square in Zocalo is called Plaza de la Constitución and is the home to the National Palace and the Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral. The cathedral is open to the public and contains many beautiful altars and ornaments. The National Palace is the center of the Mexican government and contains the office of the president. You can take a free tour of the palace and see the famous Diego Rivera Mural but you first needed to get a ticket at the National Palace Historical Museum across Moneda Street. There are tours every 30 minutes in Spanish and an English tour at 3.30 p.m. The murals tell the history of Mexico from the Tenochtitlan time through the 1950s when Diego Rivera died. Attached to the National Palace is the National Museum of World Culture. This free museum contains artifacts and replicas from ancient and contemporary world culture, including Korea, Japan, China, and the Middle East. Many events taking place in the Plaza de la Constitution. While we were there, the annual festival celebrating the indigenous people and culture of the original Mexico City neighborhood was taking place. There were lots of artisans and people selling traditional food. Just off the square, there are Aztec medicine men who will perform a spiritual cleansing ritual for a small price. Near the Zocalo is the Templo Mayo Museum. 
This museum costs 90 pesos to enter and focuses on the ecological finding of the Zocalo. It is here that the famous Aztec sunstone was discovered in 1790, just west of the main square along Avenue Cinco de Mayo is the tile house. This famous 18th century building is covered with beautiful blue and white tiles. Across the street from the tile house is the San Francisco atrium, which currently houses an art exhibit of Marisol Warner Bar's work. These pieces are designed to be manipulated by the viewer to always show a different perspective. Also nearby is the City Banamex Culture Palace, which showcases a temporary exhibit. The current exhibit through November 2023 is of painting screens and portraits dating back to the 17th and 18th century. No visit to the Shokala would be complete without stopping into the Grand Hotel Lobby. This turn-of-the-century hotel lobby contains a beautiful stained glass ceiling along with a gilded open elevator and was used to fill in two James Bond films, License to Kill and Spectra. The largest park in Mexico City is Chapultepec Park. The name Chapultepec comes from the Aztec language and means Hill of the Great Sapo. The park is twice the size of Central Park in New York and features tree lined paths, statues, fountains, attractions, and museums. There is even a Canadian totem pole. Please note that the park is closed on Mondays. I spent more than a day wandering along the tree-lined path and exploring everything Chapultepec has to offer. In the center of the park on top of the hill is the only true castle in North America, Chapultepec Castle. This castle was built in 1725 as a royal residence and currently houses the National Museum of History. The castle is split into two different sections. The castle itself where you can view the grounds and the room as they were back in the 1800s and the National History Museum of Mexico. While on the castle grounds, Make sure to take advantage of the great view of Mexico City. The ticket costs 90 pesos and must be purchased at the bottom of the hill. To the west of the castle is the Chapultepec Zoo. The zoo is visited by over 5.5 million people a year, which make it one of the most visited in the world. Chapultepec Zoo was the first institution outside of the China to successfully breed giant pandas. In total, eight pandas have been born at the zoo. There is no charge to enter the zoo. However, they do charge a small fee if you want to go into the butterfly or insect buildings. Near the zoo is the very popular Chapultepec Lake, where you can rent a rowboat or a paddle boat. The paths around the lake and in other sections of the parks are all lined with vendors selling food, drinks, or souvenirs. This is a popular place to shop for street food and have a snack or light meal. There is a small tram that looks like a train that circles the park. The cost is 25 pesos per person, and there is a stop at the frog fountain near the zoo. On the north end of the park is the National Museum of Anthropology. This is the most visited museum in Mexico and traces the history of Mexico from Neanderthal men. The museum houses the famous sunstone along with the 
replica of Aztec tombs. The building itself is known for its courtyard dominated by a center courtyard with a suspended roof and waterfall. The cost to enter the museum is 90 pesos. There are often street performers outside the museum performing Aztec music and dancing. One of the most unique area of Chapultepec Park is the Oreo Rama. This is a tranquil area where you can sit or lie on one of many benches. Many people take a nap here. They play soothing music and even have books you can borrow for free while you rest. Since the time of Montezuma, a botanical garden has been on the park site. There are over 400 different plants and trees divided into themes. Make sure to go all the way to the back of the garden to see the Art Deco inspired orchid greenhouse which was built in the 1940s. Mexico City is filled with the street vendors selling food and merchandise. You can find them in local markets at all the metro stations and just about every corner. I was able to buy most of my fruits and vegetables at one of these vendors. During my stay, I tried a lot of different street food, including soup, empanadas, pastry, tostadas, and tacos. I enjoyed them all. I also visited several of the local markets. The two I recommend are Koyokan Market and Jamaica Market. The Koyokan Market is located about 45 minutes north of the Shokalo by Metro and is only three blocks from the Frida Kahlo Museum. The market has a lot of different food stalls along with the clothing. I highly recommend that you get some tostadas at one of the food stalls, either before or after visiting the museum. If you want to visit a market with everything, then the Jamaica market is the place to go. This market is only 20 minutes southeast of the Shokalo by metro and take it up an entire city block. The market is best known for sale of flowers and ornamental plants, but you can also find meat, fruit, grocery, kitchen supplies, snacks, and souvenirs. There are also several food stores where you can sit down and have a bite to eat. In addition to the street food, there are many restaurants located throughout the city from simple mom and pa to elegant dining and everything in between. I tried the La Casa de Tono, which is a chain restaurant that serves traditional Mexican dishes. It was pretty good. If you are looking for a more traditional grocery market, there are Walmart Express, Soriana, and a La Coma market throughout the city. In addition, there are several Costco's, and you can always find a neighborhood convenience store like 7-Eleven, Circle Case, or AXO. Over 20 million pilgrims visit the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe each year, making the second most visited Christian site behind St. Peter's Basilica. The ground of the Basilica contains multiple churches, gardens, statues, a museum, and a courtyard capable of holding tens of the thousands of worshippers. Make sure when you visit to go up the hill to see the Capilla del Sarito built in the 1600s, and then down the other side to visit the Sagrado Tepeyac Garden and the offering statue. I also highly recommend going through the museum 
which has a collection of paintings, sculptures, jewelry, and furniture dating back to the 17th and 18th centuries. Frida Kahlo was a famous Mexican artist who grew up in the Coyoacan area of Mexico City. Her house is called the Blue House, now houses a museum of her work. The museum is very popular and you must buy reserved time tickets online. Frida married Diego Rivera, who painted the murals at the National Palace, and the two of them built side-by-side -side houses and studios, which have now been turned into the Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo Studio House Museum. This museum is free on Sundays. Located just five blocks west of the Chocalo is the Palace of Fine Arts. This is a famous art deco building. It is the Fine Arts Center for Mexico City and hosted many performances and exhibitions. On-site museum is free on Sunday and the house of several famous moral and other exhibits. Ballet Folklorico de Mexico perform multiple times a week showcasing the music and the dance of Mexico, which I highly recommend. The tickets are available through Ticketmaster and at the box office. Across the courtyard on the 8th floor of the Sears store is a cafe with an awesome view of the palace. It is a great place to stop for drink or a light bite to eat. While I was in Mexico City, I took a free walking tour with the Estación Mexico, free tour of the, some of the oldest neighborhoods in Mexico City, Roma and Condensa. While the tours are free, you are encouraged to tip your guide at the end, as this is the how they make their money. The tour lasts about two hours and I learn a lot and I enjoy very much. I really enjoyed my time in Mexico City. Please make sure to watch my other Mexican videos on the Mexican Pyramid and San Miguel de Allende, which are linked at the end of this video. Thank you for watching my video. Be happy, be healthy, happy traveling. Thumbs up and subscribe button appreciated.